All right. I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. I mean, this is truly inspiring for those of you who have uh, run a marathon before. You're like, oh, man, we got a lot of catching up to do, um, a lot of work to do. If you haven't run, I'm probably pretty sure you're probably inspired to give it a go, try it out. Um, you know, the story is just remarkable. Uh, so glad I got a chance to meet you last year and just to see, you know, the well-deserved attention that you've been getting. I remember when uh, the New York Times did a profile on you, the first thing they wrote about was your little ankles. That's the thing. That was the exact <laughs> quote they said, yeah, little ankles. <laughs> so I'm going to ask the first question because it is certainly on everybody's minds. It has to be. Um, just going to go ahead and say it. Uh, are you a better runner or a better dancer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, in all seriousness, though, how many marathons did you run while in San Quentin? Four. Four marathons. And the best time was? 320, color frame for Boston, but 316 was my first one. Oh, man, that is, that is, that is truly, truly amazing. Yeah, 320 was the slowest one. <laughs> 320 was the slowest one. Well, all right. <laughs> you did make fun of me, too, about my marathons, how we first met. <laughs> Um, I guess before we get to the audience Q&A, my last question is just going to be, you know, what do you want people in the room to take away from, from this, uh, from the documentary? Uh, that we are not our crimes, um, that when given a chance, we can do better, uh, believe in us, trust the process, and that, um, I think just like me, given a second chance, I think Everybody deserves a second chance and, and just look at it from another another side. Like, I mean, anybody can be there, but it's how you what you do with it while you're there and just make the best out of it and never give up. You mentioned also, even in the documentary, about not doing it alone. And you know that's a message that a lot of us need to hear. Uh, with that, I know we got somebody in the back who's going to be floating around. Because we got the light in our eyes, so I can't necessarily see whose hands are up. But if people have questions, we're going to have somebody moderating. Darby, you got hands. Yeah, just put your hands up. And somebody. OK, I can't, yeah, I can't see these first two. So we'll start here, and then we'll go there. Okay. Hi, I'm Brittany. Um, first, you're very inspirational. Um, congratulations on, you know, being a wonderful runner and, and working your way up. And um, are you inspired to kind of carry on the message and bring, you know, the Mayo Club into other facilities? Uh, first of all, thank you guys. I feel like I'm extremely grateful and thankful for this opportunity. I thank you and appreciate you for having me in this beautiful city. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think we have a movement started, so <laughs> as much, I mean, this is like my third time doing this, and I'm still not comfortable, I'm still nervous, <laughs> so excuse me, I'm kind of muffling, um, but yes, um, we're making this movement, hopefully, across the United States, bringing, um, I call it run therapy to uh, institutions and also to uh, juvenile facilities. Like we just came from Cleveland and I spoke in there and mm -hmm. hopefully we can carry this message of run therapy um, and bring a different, s I mean, the running community is beautiful. You know, you can talk and all that stuff and you have family, you have support. But there's a emotional intelligence piece that I like to bring to uh the running community uh, as far as helping people to find themselves and work on the insides from the inside out, as well as run and get the exercise in the community and the love from the running community. Thank you. And, uh, we got one right here. Yeah. Um, I just want to thank you for, for sharing what you've been through uh, and being here with us today. Uh, I'm a runner. I've run all my life. I've run three Boston's. We've done the same race. I didn't know you were there. Uh, <laughs> or else I would have shook your hand because you tell me more of what running can mean uh, in the last 90 minutes than a lifetime of running has to me. 
Uh, so I thank you for that. And my, my only question would be, what's your next rate? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully Ireland. I'm trying to go into Ireland. That'll be my first out of the country race. Um, if not, um, I'm going back to Chicago and New York. Um, but I did break three at Boston last year. <laughs> Two fifty two flat was the time. Oh man. At forty nine, so I'm not Oh man, come on man. <laughs> <laughs> We're done here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I okay. Uh Martel, um thank you so much. Uh, you are very inspirational. Um I'm wondering, um, running helped me to overcome or to, it helped me to, it was a support to me uh, after I quit using drugs and drinking. And uh, I've been running for over 40 years now. And my question to you is, what, do you, what are you doing currently to help stay clean and not use oh, thank you for that. Uh, just like in prison, I, uh, by the way, in San Quentin, that's one of the best places to ever be to try to work on yourself to be better, to get out. I was already five years free mentally, spiritually, and physically before even being released. If they wouldn't have ever released me, I was already free because I had a program and I was set and I was content to live one day at a time. So I do the same thing out here. I work, I go to NA, I go to AA, I do Shakespeare, I run with a com my group, I do run therapy coaching, and I motivational speak, and I get to travel now, um, thanks to the film festivals, I get to do stuff like this. And it's helping me build confidence in my speaking, I'm getting a little bit better. <laughs> I still need training. I got you. <laughs> That's the, part I, that's the part I will be able to help you. You can help me become a better runner, and then we'll, we'll exchange. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, we'll go here then. I'll just make while you have it. Yeah, we'll start here. Thank you for sharing your story. Um, one question I had is, do you keep in touch with anyone um, from your time um, in prison? And do you ever go back to participate in the run club? Oh, I'm glad you said that. Um, I've been trying for two and a half years because there's programs inside of San Quentin. San Quentin has allowed people who are formerly incarcerated alumni. We're called formerly incarcerated residents instead of convicts. Um, yes, we are allowed to go back in, but for some strange reason with me, uh, it's been a little bit of a struggle. I won't get into that, but um, we're working on getting me in as a run coach with the club and also bring uniforms in for the Thousand Mile Running Club. So we working on that. That was my passion and my dream when I left. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that scene at the restaurant where you said you wanted someone to cook like that, did you? <laughs> Honestly, um, <laughs> I'm, for some reason, I mean, I got people trying to, I mean, they even promised to come to my house to help me cook. <laughs> but I cook breakfast. I'm, I'm, I'm getting more comfortable with cooking breakfast. But I mean, I, I don't know. I guess it's the time. Just, I just lost all confidence in my ability to cook <laughs> dinner foods. <laughs> but breakfast, I'll, I'll eat breakfast all day. I'll eat that for dinner. <laughs> That's why I'm still thin. <laughs> Oh, we got somebody all the way in the back. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you for blessing Milwaukee with your presence. And um, one of the other films that was just screened here was called Subject, and it's about um, the impact of being the subject of a film like this, where you're kind of, you know, you bury yourself in front of people that you don't know. And I'm wondering what your experience was with the production of the film, and what you felt expected during that process, and what you're given any input in how you're presenting the film. <laughs> At first, I was a skeptic because um, 
I think everybody else, I felt like everybody else was presented very well, and I've done a lot inside there, but now that I look at it, and the more and more I get used to looking at it, um, I think she did a really good job. Um, with that being said, um, I was respected, and it also helped me to be able to be more articulate in being accountable and articulating the facts of my, in the case of my crime, and being open and honest. Uh, so when it came to talking to the board, uh, I was ready. We got another one in the back. I, that's, I actually cannot see in the back. So I'm just going to take your word for it. I guess it's kind of a, like a simple, like more practical question. Because having been a person that has run and tried to run and my son's a runner, I you know shoot every so important. <laughs> like, right? Like, they're expensive and they're important. And, like, how, I'm just wondering, like, how is there, how, how do the, the inmates even just get appropriate shoes to do that? That was one of the reasons why I joined the club. It was a nice hat and tennis shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I like clothes and shoes. <laughs> um, what they do is they, they get outside sponsors to raise money for them to buy shoes for the guys inside. The only thing that was missing is like, the baseball team, the basketball team, they have the Warriors and the Kings and they have the 49ers and the Raiders and they have the Giants and the A's all donate because those are all the sports that are that are privileged to have in San Quentin State Prison. And the Thousand Mile Club, which I was a part of, the only thing they had was shoes, but they got cleats. So, and they got uniforms that were donated from like real uniforms. So I was like, well, maybe we can come up with something. So the first thing I had was that you could see in the, when I was running um, the marathon, I had that, uh, it was a razor wire shape and it had um, Thousand Mile Club and I was representing them, my brothers I left behind, but also was trying to come up with my first prototype of a uniform style that they can wear inside. So I'm still working on that. So that's how that came about. So I ended up having an alternative clothing line besides that and I'm wearing one of my hats now, but that's something else. But Th yeah, that's that's what I'm uh, I'm working on, and hopefully we can get that hap make that happen. I was actually going to transition to that to the Markel Gazelle Run Free because I have a shirt that you gifted me last year. So you want to take a second to talk about it? Give a shameless plug. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Why not? It's not shameless. We're giving the floor to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how I started. I was trying to get some creative for them inside, and um, I had some. Um, unfortunately, I had some people that didn't want to make that happen for me, so I got to go around that. And I never give up, just like a, a marathon, even in prison on the streets, I never gave up. So I'm not going to give up. Um, so um, I started my clothing line, Markel the Gazelle Runs Free. Um, I had some support on helping me get my um, trade, get it, get it trademarked. And so I'm also working on getting another logo that's not as aggressive. But I have hats and stuff like that, and T-shirts and singlets and stuff like that that um, I started. And hopefully I can get that business going, but I kind of put it to the side. I didn't give up on it. I just put it on hold for a minute. You got to learn how to cook. I got to learn how to cook first <laughs> <laughs> before I can try to do business. But, yeah, I still got some T-shirts and stuff like that for men and women, tank tops, beanies, hats, uh, sweatsuits. Is there a place people can find that right now? Uh, it might be linked to the uh, San Quentin Thousand Mile Club movie website, but I also got my own website. Um, but I'm still getting help on getting the yeah. website together where I can be able to transition it to Venmo and credit cards. Cool. So it's a slow process, <laughs> just like a marathon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I know we have one last question right there in the middle. Yeah, um, what's something that everyone in this room can do to help people like yourself who are either incarcerated, formerly incarcerated, besides buying your merch or helping people like yourself get their work done? Um, well, I think that we can all do it together. Um, I think that it's really important that we all stand together and work together and support each other. Whether it's Milwaukee, wherever um, state institutions or federal institutions is um, get involved, get active in helping guys the best way they, you can as far as either 
um, I don't know, writing them or whatever, however within legal means to support however you can, um, you can do that. Um, I mean, you helping the Thousand Mile Club right now by just being here, because somehow, some way connected, um, some of the proceeds would be going to um, the Thousand Mile Club. Um, so, um, yeah. Thank you all again so much for being here. Let's give it up for Mark Hill, everybody. Thanks, everybody.